Well, uh, welcome back, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, so uh, before we get started, a show of hands, has anyone ever used the Google Assistant before? <laughs> has anyone ever used it for work or inside of an app? Great. So hopefully most of you can learn something today. Um, <clears throat> so most of the time when you think of you know, the Google Assistant or a voice, you think of something like uh, an Android app uh, or you know, the Assistant app on Android or iOS uh, or Google Home. Um, today, the goal is to be able to put your app next to these two, uh, uh, these two products, to be able to show that you can uh, add voice functionality um, to an enterprise app. So <clears throat> let's start off with thinking about you know, some use cases and, and some possible things you can do with voice. Uh, there's a couple of different sides to this. One of them is more, um, it is an enterprise use case, but it's more on the consumer side. Uh, so you think of hotels. You know, you're going to have an account that you're going to have to link with uh, a Google account or an account that is going to enable a voice uh, speaker of some kind. Um, think about if you, you know, you're getting out of the shower and you just want to say, like, hey, Google, you know, have the valet bring my car on, please. Um, or, you know, check out um, or something like that. Because, uh, I mean, I've actually been in a car on the way to the airport forgetting to do some of these things before. Um, so, and then on the internal side of things, if you're building an app to help your employees, so if you're a first responder, uh, you're probably pretty busy, you're probably, things are probably pretty hectic, uh, you're running around. Um, you might want to say, hey, uh, where's my next emergency? Uh, have your phone um, or tablet or whatever you're using be able to automatically uh, take you to your next, you know, next emergency or next uh, visit. So there's obviously a lot more things you can do with voice and the assistant. Um, and looking a little bit uh, even farther in the future, and we can start to do some of these things today, um, but think about if you know, your phone could automatically just start translating audio for you. Um, you know, we have a pretty basic version of this now, but it's going to end up being better and better, and eventually you'll be able to even respond um, and go the other way. So the other thing, too, is generally when you're talking to an app or the assistant, you're kind of talking to it in a pretty basic way. Uh, you kind of talk to it like it's a computer. You know, it's like, give it a small set of instructions. It's kind of hard to say, like, OK, order me a pizza with extra cheese and pepperoni and a lot of other things. Like, you know, right now, that's pretty hard uh, to pull apart. And it's pretty hard to get right. Uh, and finally, think about something like augmented reality, where you can, you know, I don't know, tell, uh, you know, tell your camera, hey, go find out what that is, or, or you know, find threats, or find something interesting, almost like a Terminator style uh, <laughs> use case. So there's a lot of things in the future that are going to be pretty interesting. So for now, uh, let's talk about you know, what we're going to learn today is how to make a basic, a very basic uh, voice app or like a bot. They're very similar. Um, this topic deserves its own presentation. And it actually can be fairly complex to build something really cool. Um, but I'm going to go pretty quick through it, because we uh, only have 20 minutes. Uh, secondly is, let's add this you know, voice app or this bot that we made to our Android app. Uh, and finally, let's expose it to uh, the Google Assistant and uh, anywhere else we actually might want to have this available. So starting out, uh, I need to mention a tool we have uh, called Dialogflow. It's a cross-platform natural language processing tool that basically allows you to specify, uh, they're called intents, which is uh, not the same as an Android intent. It's a little confusing. Um, basically, I'm expecting to hear this phrase or this sentence. Um, and that can be broken down. Uh, you can have variables. You can have other pieces of this. So you can kind of basically say, oh, here's a command that I'm going to give you. Um, Dialogflow has a really nice UI. It's really easy to just jump in and say, OK, I want to, you know, I just want to do something really quick. And you can actually try and you can actually build a whole bot uh, without actually writing any code. Obviously, you can write code to do this. But I highly recommend starting out that way. Um, the nice thing is, as well, it's agnostic of the platform. So if you build your, you know, your voice application uh, separately from your apps, your website, or anything like that, uh, you don't have to update your app every time you change something. Uh, so that means you don't have to worry about rollout times. You don't have to worry about, like, you know, hey, we wanted to make a small change uh, to our voice integration. Uh, we don't have to, like, you know, have a new release for our Android app, which is really nice. So here's a quick screenshot of what Dialogflow looks like. Uh, I'm not going to go through this in tons of detail because it actually does a lot of things. Um, more importantly today, what we're talking about 
Um, whenever you create a project or an, or an agent, it's called in Dialogflow, you're going to have a couple of things that come with it, which is a default fallback intent and a default welcome intent. So this is like a basic, like, hey, I didn't understand you, and oh, uh, you're new to this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say something like, hey, welcome to what we're doing. In this case, we're going to build a really basic find a meeting room, uh, as you can see up here, uh, use case, which basically says, hey, where's the closest meeting room to me? So uh, actually, back at a couple of things, like just to mention, um, there's something called entities. This allows you to specify like, objects that you can recognize, so custom um, like, locations and things like that, um, or something that might be custom, maybe like hotels, if you're a hotel company, or, or something like that. Um, and then one other concept I want to mention is fulfillment. Uh, this basically means a webhook. This means that you're going to be able to specify URLs. So Dialogflow does have its own NLP, and it can respond. But if you want it to be smart and talk to your system or your back end, um, you need to actually have something called webhooks, which is like it's going to make an HTTP call to your website with the information that was presented to it. Uh, for our extremely basic example, uh, this is always going to reply with the closest meeting rooms behind you, uh, which is pretty boring, but uh, that's what it's going to be. Uh, you, any responses you add here will come back in a random order. Um, Again, this is like super basic. It's just to, so we have a bot to talk to in Android. Um, so let's start to talk about now that we have a super basic bot that tells you where the closest meeting room is, even though it's always behind you. Uh, there's two sets of APIs. Currently, the Android library is, is being revamped for version two. Uh, so version one is what we need to do right now. Uh, so in the settings dialog flow, you're going to get a key, the client access token. and Integrating your Android app is pretty simple. Uh, it's mostly boilerplate. Um, you know, the only permissions you really need, uh, obviously, internet is pretty important here because you have to be able to communicate with Dialogflow from the API standpoint. Um, and you need to record audio because you're going to be actually you know, recording audio and voice. Uh, um, for Gradle, um, one thing to call out here, you'll notice that they both say API.ai. Uh, Dialogflow, when it was acquired, was called API.ai. The next version will have Dialogflow uh, in the library names. Um, and finally, the most important part of this is really make sure you ask for permission. Um, the nice thing about permissions when you're using uh, in an, from an enterprise context is your EMM can actually be configured to set the permission to automatically on for you, so you don't have to actually ask the user if there's permission. So this will lead to like, less bugs and less issues of users like forgetting to click the right button or for, forgetting to click allow. So <clears throat> here's what the code looks like. Uh, there's a couple of boilerplate classes you need. Um, one of them is just basically like configuring the service, using the service for Dialogflow, uh, as well as we're also using text-to-speech here because we actually want uh, our app to talk back to us. Uh, instead of text-to-speech, you could use a Google Cloud Speech API if you want like, a nicer voice, uh, more than what the one built into the Android platform. Um, again, this is mostly boilerplate. Um, the configuration, the only thing you really need here uh, from external stuff we've talked about is the client access token, and that's from the dialog flow interface we talked about before. So to actually start using these classes, once we have everything set up, uh, it's fairly simple. There's a start listening and a stop listening. Um, this is going to be what you're using. So you have a button in your app, or you have some way to interact with your application that allows you to uh, actually start and stop listening. There's going to be an interface called AI Listener that you implement. It has six methods. Uh, four of them are for the state of whether or not the uh, dialog flow is listening. So it'll say like on listening, you know, on stop listening, and things like that. So I didn't put those on here because they're pretty basic. The two most important ones are on result and on error. Uh, on result, what we care about the most, uh, especially from a, you know, I want to have an interactive vo like Android app that's talking to me, is uh, getting the speech. So you're going to get a result back from dialog flow, which is going to have a few objects in it. Um, for this case, the only two that are really important are uh, getting the fulfillment and getting the speech from the result. And then also I like to call out there's something called an action, which we didn't specify earlier. But every intent in dialog flow, or every sentence you want to recognize in dialog flow, can have an identifier called an action. So that's basically like, hey, if you wanted to have a switch statement in your code to know, oh, what replied uh, if you have a more complex uh, dialog flow agent. And on the error side, that's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you pay attention to the errors to make sure 
um, you know, if the speech wasn't recognized um, or there was a connectivity issue or, or something else. So now that we have a really basic app that knows how to talk uh, with Dialogflow, uh, the tricky part is actually getting this to work for the Google Assistant. And not because the Google Assistant is, is hard to use, it's because uh, from an enterprise context, you generally probably need a G Suite domain to do this, just because you want to make sure that all of your users are in, uh, you know, in the same organization. Um, so there's actually uh, the action. So to expose a Dialogflow agent to the Google Assistant, which is actually separate from Android completely, uh, the mechanism is called an action on Google. Uh, an action on Google is a third-party voice app. So currently, if you go to the assistant and say, hey, Google, uh, talk to NBA Trivia, or hey, Google, talk to Netflix, um, you're going to get actions that were created by the NBA and Netflix. And those are going to be sandboxed in their own area. So you can expose the same functionality that's in your app to the assistant as well. Um, sorry. Uh, from Dialogflow, it's actually pretty simple. It's front and center when you go to integrations. Uh, there's about 15 types of integrations you can do. Um, so you can actually have this bot or this agent be running almost anywhere. Uh, if you do have a pretty large company that sells software to customers, um, it is possible for, for us to add more of these, but come talk to us if you would like, to, if you want to be listed there, if you think that you have a use case that might make sense uh, to be an integration for Dialogflow. <clears throat> so integration settings, this allows you to basically just deploy your app to a action on Google project. Uh, once it's deployed, uh, there's a simulator. So we have a, like a web simulator that just kind of mimics a Google Home or the Google Assistant. Uh, it runs you know, on, there's different services you can pick. So you can kind of pretend where you are, whether you have a screen or not, uh, whether you're on a mobile device or not. Um, and it's basically going to be like, talk to my test app, find me a meeting room, and the closest meeting room is behind you. Uh, one thing you might notice is Dialogflow is very good at like, inferring what you meant. And that's kind of the hard part about natural language processing. I could say, find a conference room, find a meeting room, um, or some other permutation of that that's kind of far off. And it will still know what you meant, which is pretty nice. So uh, back to the hotel use case we talked about, if you want to link your room with you know, the assistant, uh, there's actually an authentication step you have to do. So inside of your app, if you're a hotel again, let's say, uh, you'd actually have to uh, do account linking. Um, from a uh, server standpoint, you have to uh, use OAuth2. So your app already has to support OAuth2. Most of them do today. Um, enable account linking, and there's several scopes that you have to add to this. Uh, and finally, um, on the action on Google side, so this is actually JavaScript you're going to run on the server. Uh, there's a couple things you have to ask for. Um, one of them is just basically saying, hey, uh, sign in, because we're not sure if you actually signed in yet. And two, you can actually verify if someone signed in uh, on the right. But this is important because if you don't actually have some sort of account linkage, um, the Google Assistant won't know, um, you know which like, hotel room you're in. And obviously, on the hotel room side, some work has to be done as well to make sure that that specific device, let's say it's a Google Home, is connected to your like, hotel account, which is connected to you through, your, uh, through their consumer app. Uh, so if you're a G Suite customer, um, this process is a little bit easier. <coughs> you just have to enable two things. Um, both of them are the Google, the Google Developer Console and Web and App Activity. If you don't enable these, uh, you're going to have a bunch of like, weird errors, and uh, a lot of the consoles and the Google Assistant won't actually show up for your users. Um, but this is important. A nice thing about using Google Assistant as well is in the Actions console, you can give access to groups of users instead of just individual users. Currently, the Assistant does require a Google account. Uh, so this means that in some way, shape, or form, your users will need to have a Google account that's, that maps to their corporate identity. So circling back, you know, we started off talking about like, you know, building a, a smart hotel. Uh, so what do we have to use to build this? So this is actually probably the most complex use case that you can think of, because um, we have to use Dialogflow Enterprise. Um, that's going to use webhooks that use sign-on, uh, which means you're going to have to do account linking. Um, 
you know, that's going to be partially through the server side and through your Android app. Uh, and finally, you know, again, we're going to integrate with the Google Assistant as well, so you can use both the app to talk to you and the Google Assistant itself. So for the first responder use case we talked about initially, um, this is actually a bit simpler because it's really just about creating a bot or an agent that is able to handle the information you need. Um, this will still need to use webhooks because you're probably going to have to get external information that's not going to be inside of Dialogflow. Um, and again, this is just using the basic text-to-speech uh, on Android. <clears throat> so I ended a little bit early, but um, thank you. If you have any questions, uh, happy to take them. Oh, there. Yes, please. How, how to add content from the company to the recognizing? For example, for a booking system, you need uh, information about the price, where it is, and something. Uh, sorry, so you're asking how do you add content um, to the, the app, like the Dialogflow agent or the bot yes. that's custom or from your back end? Mm -hmm. So I think, okay, yeah. So um, I didn't have an example of that in here. I was trying to. Uh, keep this really simple. Uh, so Dialogflow allows you to have a webhook, it's called. So every intent or every question you can ask uh, can also reach out to a third-party URL to get more information. So you can use the, uh, it's called the, you know, the Dialogflow API, the JavaScript API, to call to your third-party service and have it return with the exact answer that you want. So there's a, there's a function called ask, which will return the actual, uh, like the, the information that you want. It will return the text that you want to say um, in the language that you want. Um, a couple of other things as well. You can pick like the voice, and there are some other features like that um, if it's on the assistant. Does that answer your question? Cool. Please uh, take, go to the microphone so that oh. everybody can hear you. <laughs> Hi. Um, how can you publish actually these applications like Google Assistant? How do you publish? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. So. Uh, similar to Google Play, there's uh, three tracks to publish in. Um, there's an alpha channel, a beta channel, and then production. Um, alpha and beta work very similar to uploading an app. Uh, production uh, gets submitted to us, similar to Google Play, although there is a review process that goes through. So um, we check to make sure that um, your app doesn't have any um, edge cases where the user might be confused. Um, not having a, you know, this, like I said, this is a huge, a huge topic, is talking about like, how to design for voice, like a UI for voice instead. But, the biggest problem we see is they'll, you know, your app will respond with something without a follow-up. So it's like, if I asked you a question and said, if you asked, you know, um, I don't know, who's playing soccer today? Um, if, if you were inside an app and you said, like, who's playing soccer today? And I, and I just gave you the answer, but I said, it just like said, oh, Germany's playing today. But if I didn't follow up with, is there anything else I can help you with? Do you want to know what else is happening? Um, you're just, the user's kind of stuck. So when you're asking the assistant that, it's a bit different. But when you're in a third-party action uh, or your own app, it's really important to make sure that the user always knows the options and what they can say. Um, this is kind of what I was talking about with you know, complex use cases, where eventually you'll be able to do dictation and just say a really complicated sentence. And you know, we'll be able to just say, oh, OK, here's what you meant by this. But right now, you have to kind of guide the user to help them understand what's possible. Sean. Uh, yeah, there's, oh yeah, sure, if you want to go for it. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, we, we talked a little bit about Managed Play earlier and how you can uh, use Google Play to distribute enterprise applications out to your end users. Um, and in, that, in the Google Play example, you neither need, you do not need a G Suite or Google account to do that app, app distribution. There is not an equivalency today for Assistant. So Assistant no. today just handles B2C distribution. There's not yet an enterprise channel for Assistant. Yeah, so that, that is very true. Um, the one thing I can say on that front is if you do require authentication um, for your Google Assistant action, um, there's, it's very unlikely that your action will be found. Uh, discovery is actually one of the largest challenges of the voice in general. So if you have an app and you set it to production and you pretty much don't put any information about it publicly, it's going to be, no one's going to find it. No one will be able to actually access it. Obviously, if you're more of like an on-prem type solution um, or something that's very hidden, like that might not be OK. But for some use cases, it might work. So it's like hidden by obscurity almost. <laughs> that was it? Yeah, that was it.